In this episode, we're going to look at how to combine resistors in series and parallel. And then we'll also look at how to combine resistors in more complicated geometries as well. Let's first consider just two resistors in series in a circuit. The circuit is supplied with a voltage V, and because of conservation of charge, we know that the same current flows through each part of the circuit. And here we have two resistors, R1 and R2. These could be any value that we are interested in. And we want to know how to combine them into one equivalent or total resistance. So the problem is, what is R sub T? And because we know the charge is conserved in the circuit, we know that we can apply Ohm's law across each resistor. So the voltage dropped across V1 is equal to I R1. And the voltage dropped across resistor 2 is V2 I R2. And because we know that the voltage at this point in the circuit and this point in the circuit is V, V has to equal V1 plus V2, which is I R1 plus I R2. That I factors out, so we have V equal I times the quantity R1 plus R2, which we can then just rewrite as V equals I R sub T. So we know that in this case, R sub T is equal to R1 plus R2. And in general, if you have several resistors in series, you just add them up. Now let's look at resistors in parallel. So suppose that we have these two resistors in parallel, R1 and R2. But now we know that the total current flowing into each branch uh, has to equal the same amount of current flowing out of both branches. So the current in each branch themselves has to add up to what is going in and what's coming out as well. So we have I2 flowing through resistor R2, and we have current I1 flowing through resistor R1. And I has to equal I1 plus I2, because the current just branches at that point. Current also, I1 and I2 also combine into I1 over on the other side. So the problem here, again, is to combine those two resistors in parallel into an equivalent resistance. So again, because charge is conserved, we know that I equals I1 plus I2. And again, we have to drop a constant voltage across each of those resistors. So the voltage dropped across R1 is V1 equal I1 R1, and the same for resistor R2. That's going to be V2 equals I2 R2. You can rewrite both of these just by rearranging to solve for the current. So we have I1 equal V1 over R1 and I2 equal V2 over R2. Now we substitute those back into this equation. And we can write now for I, which is going to be equal to V over R sub T, that's got to equal I1, which is V1 over R1, plus I2, which is V2 over R2. And as I said before, the voltage drop across this battery has to be the same as the voltage dropped across each of those two resistors. So V1 equals V2, and that can factor out. And because it appears on each side of the equal sign, it will divide out, and you're left with 1 over R sub T is equal to 1 over R sub 1 plus 1 over R sub 2. And in, in general, uh, if you have you know, N resistors in parallel, the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is just equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistances. Now I want to call your attention here to one special result out of this, which is if R1 and R2 and R3 are all equal to one another, then the equivalent resistance R sub T is just equal to that resistance divided by how many resistors you have. And we're going to use that result in just a moment. So Usually you work problems in electronics texts and physics books that are uh, simple 
series and parallel resistance problems. But I thought it would be interesting to look at something a little less simple. Uh, and we have two examples uh, that we'll talk about in this episode. One of these is for a pyramid of resistors. All the resistors are the same. And the question is, how do you compute what the resistance, the equivalent resistance is between points A and B? You know, you can set up a circuit with a voltage V, uh, and we know that there's a current I that flows into it and a, uh, out of this maze, and a current I that flows out of it. So, how do you go about attacking this? Well, again, we know that charge is conserved, and so what flows in to these circuits has to be split between these three paths here, and actually it recombines over here in the same way. So we know that the current I flowing into this node will branch out into three paths, uh, one going from A to B, one going from A to C, and one going from A to D. Now, everything in this uh, branch of the circuit is symmetrical. So we know that these currents are going to be equal and therefore, because these resistors are equal, the voltage dropped between A and C and A and D are going to be equal. So what that means is that point D and point C are at the same potential. And we know that current does not flow between two points that have the same potential. So we can interpret that now um, in two different ways. Because points C and D are at the same potential, there's no current flowing between them. So that's the same thing as saying that you could just remove this resistor, or you could replace that resistor with just a short, a direct connection between points C and D. So let's look at the result that we get if we imagine that you just replace this resistor with a short. In that case, you have two resistors in parallel, these two here, and you have two resistors in parallel, these two here. And if you remember from the previous note, that two, resist, two like resistors in parallel are just equal to half the resistance of a single resistor. So we've got R over 2 and R over 2, R over 2 here and R over 2 here, and so they're connected in series and we're still left with this resistor here, which is R. Well, R over 2 and R over 2 in series, you just add those together, so you end up with R and R, and you know that two resistors, two like resistors in parallel, just give half the resistance. So that means that the resistance between points A and B is just R over 2. So it's not something that you would have necessarily guessed. But let's see if that agrees with the other interpretation, where you just remove this resistor instead of short it. Well, if you remove that resistor, I think you can see now that you've got this in series with that, this in series with that, and both of those are in parallel with one another and this. So you end up with R in series with R, R in series with R, and R. So you end up with 2R in parallel with 2R in parallel with R. And when you work that out, you end up with 1 over 2R plus 1 over 2R plus 1 over R. And that works out to be R over 2, just like we got in the other case. So these are equivalent interpretations. Now, in the case of R equals 10 ohms, that means that the resistance, the total resistance of this pyramid should be 5 ohms. Well, let's see if that's the case. Put this aside. I've so soldered together a pyramid of 10 ohm resistors. And uh, let's just move this up here so we can see a little bit better. Okay, and I'm going to connect the leads between different nodes. And lo and behold, we get five ohms. Now, just to make the point, I'm not going to snip out this resistor 
because that would destroy my artwork. But if I clip in an alligator lead between these two points, which we thought were at equal potentials, nothing should change. And in fact, nothing changes. Okay? So uh, this is a, a demonstration of how resistors combine in series and parallel for cases where you have symmetry. Let me show one other case. I think it's kind of instructive. And that's the case of a cube. Let me disconnect this. Move the meter out of the way. So this is going to be our cube, but let's look at the circuit theory first. Whoops. So the drawing is a little bit more difficult here, but we have, you know, we're trying to model this case. So we're asking the question, what's the equivalent resistance between opposite vertices of this cube? Uh, and using the same logic, the same physics as in the case of the pyramid, you have a current flowing into this node and branching off in three points, all of which are symmetric. So you know that these are going to be equal currents. And therefore, their, the voltage dropped across these equal resistors will be the same. So that means the potential at this uh, node, the potential at this node, and the potential at that node will be equal. So you can replace those nodes with one piece of wire. In other words, these three resistors are actually in parallel. And you see that you have currents combining at this vertex of the cube as well. So you can use exactly the same argument to say that these points here, points D in this figure, are at equal potential. And so those can be shorted out as well. So when you do that, and you account for the remaining resistors, and you, you kind of have to look at this and squint for a while to see this, you end up with these three resistors in parallel at this, right, those are these, these three resistors in parallel, that's these resistors, and then the remaining six resistors in the cube are all in parallel as well. So combining these, you have one resistor, which is R over three, in series with the resistor here, which is R over six, in series with the resistor, which is R over three. And when you do that algebra, that works out to be 5R over 6, okay, or 5 sixths R. Now, in the case of R equals 10 ohms, that leaves a, an equivalent resistance of 5 sixths of 10 ohms, which works out to be 8.33 ohms. So let's see if that also works. So, <clears throat> set our cube back up again and bring our, our meter over. Okay, here's one vertex, here's the other vertex. I'm all thumbs here today, all right? And we can see that we get 8.35 ohms, whereas we had calculated, you can see that here, 8.33 ohms. So this is absolutely within tolerance of these resistors, which are what, 5% resistors. Uh, and just to make the point that you can uh, short out some of these vertices, so that would mean this vertex is the same potential as that vertex, so the resistance up here shouldn't change when I short those out. And we can also do the same thing now with the remaining vertex, which is right here. And I can short that out there. And it remains the same. And I can do the same thing with remaining vertices, um, but you know that will end up with a lot of wires in this tight shot. And uh, I think I've already made the point uh, that in cases where you have symmetry, uh, in terms of the geometric layout of the resistors and in terms of the resistors being equal, you can use kind of physical principles to combine resistors based on seeing 
where points are at equal potentials and simplifying the geometry. In the case where the resistors are not all the same, you have to result to some mathematical approaches in order to simplify the circuit. If you found this useful and interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. Thank you very much.